Good morning, everybody. It's April 30th, 2024. It's morning here in Eastern Kentucky. It's raining. I'm going to have rain most of the day today. And um, I'm going to share another testimony story. But before I do, please hit the thumbs up. This is Lorraine Alternative Homesteading. Now, this testimony was given to me quite a while ago, back in January, but it was given to me in several different emails. So if you hear me pausing, I'm, I'm going to see if I can edit this before I post it so that there aren't too many gaps in between while I'm switching from email to email. So now this is a subscriber, and I'm going to give you some background information on this person who thought it would be you know, important for you to know what the background is. So let's see. He goes on to say he lives on a boat. It's a classic mahogany cruiser that he restored. Uh, this was in the Napa Valley Marina, which is up the Napa River that runs into San Francisco Bay. Besides being docked there, I was also employed as a marine tech, tech mechanic on the marina staff for four years. Previous to that, I was a commercial truck driver for 11 years, hauling wine throughout California. Then, while still living on my boat, I started working at the Napa Valley Wine Train and had worked there for four years when it changed owners. From being privately owned to bought out by a corporation, then there was a new manager in the shop. It was about this time that my mom passed away on Christmas Eve at the age of 96. At that point, I didn't know anything about targeting, and I didn't understand why I was being treated so bad when I did exceptional work. I was 62, and I never left a job without a two-week notice and never burnt a bridge. One morning, I had enough and told them I didn't need to take this crap from them, and I just walked out. I filed for Social Security and started doing side jobs as a mechanic, still living at the marina, and not knowing anything about targeting. Life was good. <laughs> I had a fleet of vehicles that I built and treated everyone like I would want to be treated. I worked hard since I was a kid, and I saved money, I never bought anything on credit. I didn't owe anyone a dime. I'll start part two tonight. <laughs> this is where the overt targeting starts, and it gets interesting. For the record, my dad had been in the Air Force and was a first lieutenant. Having flown B-24s in World War II and C-46s from Japan to Korea in the Korean War, he was employed as a project design engineer, and he died in 1977 at the age of 59 from a heart attack. Uh, that's young. 59 is young. I was in the last Vietnam lottery with a high number and did not get drafted. Well, good for you. <laughs> I have wanted to document my experience, and your asking about the targeting has motivated me to do it. This background information may be relevant, I don't know, but part two will be sent to you tomorrow. I'll print it out from my own records, and until then, stay warm, my friend. Okay, so let's see. Uh, this is part one, and we're going to go to part two. So, there I was, prematurely retired, but everything was under control. Looking back, there are things that happened before the curtain fell, which I'll leave for part three. My mom hadn't been gone for about a year, and I wasn't getting any younger. My lady friend that I had known for about 10 years had helped me with my mom, and we got along fine, so I asked her to get married. We did that overlooking Emerald Bay at Lake Tahoe. She had and still has a rental apartment in Napa to be close to work, and I was still living on the boat. I have always been a sky watcher. I had a telescope as a kid, and my dad was still into planes, etc. Well, around 2011, 2012, I noticed changes in the moon and the luminaries, the constellations, even the way the tides were going in and out of the marina and living there for 20-some years. 
That year, people were laughing about how the world didn't end according to the main calendar. And what I saw shocked me. I also noticed the sun had changed and was setting in different places. Fast forward to 2016 when one of Kay's two adult sons, Kay must be his, his wife, one of Kay's two adult sons gave me a digital Panasonic camera with Zoom that nobody was using. So I started walking out to the fence at sunset on a regular basis and filming. Looking west, you can see Mount Tamalpais, T-A-M-A-L-P-A-I-S, 50 miles away, and is the north end of the Golden Gate Bridge with just flat wetlands between the two and some cows. The area is called Skaggs Island, S-K-A-G-G-S is there and is owned by the government. Well, it didn't take long before I started filming the chemtrail jets that love to go across the sun from as far as you can see north to as far as you can see south. I knew that there were different agendas in high altitude spraying it had been going on since World War II, but this was different. Contrails of water vapor, my ass. <laughs> There's still idiots that believe that. Well, here's where it gets good because when I looked at the jet that I zoomed in on, I was shocked to see it wasn't made of nuts and bolts. It was something else. And it was looking back at me. The image I was trying to keep was starting to deform and shift its fake shape. There were other fake jets that were white, almost transparent, and some were just a group of big orbs spraying up the sky. Well, if that wasn't enough, every evening just before dark, about five or six, things would rise up and bright flashes of light on them from the distant wetlands where the high-tension power lines cross the river and start patrolling the perimeter of a large part of the city of Napa and surrounding county. At this point, I started filming them, and they knew I was because they started following me everywhere I went. These things are not mechanical, and they can shape shift into a plane or helicopter, even a fire truck on one occasion. Pointing them out to people doesn't do any good. At this point, I was starting to wonder if I was losing my mind. Still not knowing about targeting or gang stalking, none of that was close to starting yet. I'm going to stop here for now and continue as soon as possible. It feels good to get this written down. Line-wise, this was six years ago, and it gets even stranger. So this is part two. Now we're going to go to part three. So just when things couldn't get any much stranger... I'm at Kay's place. It's late afternoon, and still light out of the moon is up. But looking strange, kind of like it's in the middle of a triangle of light. So I get the camera and zoom in. As the image gets closer to the sky, it goes from blue to black, and the moon just bright with no features visible. I zoom back out, and some treetop comes into view. Then I see a bright star to the west, and when I start to film it, it moves and goes behind a tree. Okay, I go outside and I look at what I filmed, and a big green mass had come from the backside of the moon, shoots up towards the peak of light, and changes direction downward and out of frame. At this point, my jaw drops to the floor, and I can't believe what I just filmed. It looks like a giant digital fro frog jumping over the moon. Or what is supposed to be the moon. I still have the blinkies, quote unquote, following me at night. And in the daytime, a little gray, loud plane is always around and going across my field of vision. And when I go home on the boat, as soon as I would slide the door open and step onto the dock, I would hear it. And by that time, I was at the end of the pier to go in the parking lot, and it would be overhead. 
This was ongoing and eventually became a small jet. These air things would fly over me and then loop around and disappear in the foothills to the east. Still, I never heard of targeting or gang stalking at this point. At this time, I reconnected with a friend that I had not seen in 20 years. He was living in LA and I decided to drive down to see him. And on the way, I was near Travis Air Force Base, a giant C-5. I don't know what that is. Perhaps you can tell me. A giant C-5 took off and I timed it just right to buzz right over me. The trip was like six or seven, six or eight hours. And when I arrived, I got out of my car and the gray plane was overhead. I was shook up and my visit was short and I decided to drive the eight hours home. As I did, it became night and the blinky thing was always around, even sitting on the ground in a desolate area of highway out in the field as I drove past. It was around this time that the SHTF, the shit hit the fan. I have been riding motorcycles since I'm 18 years old. And I got on the bike in the morning, the sun was way up, to drive the eight miles into town to Kay's, to his uh, wife. Well, I didn't go far before a line of oncoming cars, all with their high beams on, came towards me at a curve, around a curve. I got to the highway intersection and there were hundreds of cars, all with high beams on and everywhere on the way. I was really shook up when I got to Kay's and I sounded like a crazy person trying to explain. Now it was happening all the time. If I pulled into a gas station, cars would swarm in and out of nowhere. They seemed to know where I was going before I did. Everything became a hassle to do. When I went into the grocery store, the lights would blink on and off. The parking lot lights would be on in the middle of the afternoon whenever I went. Even industrial areas of business that were closed on Saturday. As I drove through residential neighborhoods, front porch lights would go on day or night. Cars began to cruise through the parking lot at the marina. Lots of cars with one headlight and people walking dogs. <laughs> Always cars just sitting there with the high beams on. Really strange things like people towing empty trailers around me. This eventually morphed into red vehicles and people wearing red. I was new at computers and didn't know what YouTube was then. But when I found out what was described as targeted individual and gang stalking, I felt like I was reading my, <laughs> my own obituary. I'm sorry for, for giggling here. But I, I hear you guys. Uh, this happened to me too. I, you feel like you're reading your own obituary. Break time. He's taking a break here. We'll return to part four. We're getting on to part four here, guys. I remember my 65th birthday as being the worst one of my life. Oh, we have we can share the same 65th birthday. This was the lowest I had ever felt. I was in bed crying at times, not wanting to go anywhere, do anything. Nobody to talk to that would understand. All the people that had been friends with for like 20 years had started acting strange and doing things like put lights on on other boats that would stay on all day. When I went to the storage units where I had been renting for 20 years and told the manager that there was criminal activity, stalkers on the property after hours, she responded by raising my rent and then drove past with a headlight out. All I had now was my neighbor's cat, my neighbor's cat, Gracie. She was a regular on my boat. And when I was so lost, she came and laid on my chest looking at me and just a, like a loaf up like that, like she knew I needed a friend. 
Also, I had run across a YouTube site of a girl in Toronto, Jennifer O'Brien. I think, I think you mean Kathy, maybe. Maybe Kathy O'Brien. Jennifer O'Brien, who had numerous videos of flying things following her at night that she called Blinkies. And even a daytime, one a little gray plane stalking her. Oh, maybe, maybe it is a Jennifer O'Brien. Um, at that moment, I began to start the road to my recovery. I wasn't crazy. It was happening to others, too. Well, from what I was finding out about the program, this motivated me to make a change and used the saved money for a down payment on a house before it gets stolen. So while the gang stalkers are in full swing, I'm going to go against all the odds and buy a house and sell my boat and move. But first... I'm going to need a cat of my own. <laughs> so I got a carrier and all the supplies together. And the big day came when I went to the shelter to rescue a kitten. When I opened the door of the kitten room, straight across from me was a gray and white female tabby sitting in the rear of the cage. I walked over and she came to the front and put her paw on the, board, on the bars for me to touch it. And it was then that I realized that she would match the interior of my car, LOL. We went to the meet and greet room and the rest is history. Daisy was five years old last May. One of my better decisions, part five is coming next. So here's part five, guys. The area that I decided to move to is the largest natural lake in California. It was 80 miles north. But not an easy drive. It's over a hill and full of switch turn back turns. Getting gas and everything else now is a challenge. And the first real estate agent happened to be a gang stalker. Oh, it sounds like my life. <laughs> Talk about a conflict of interest. The second house that was showed me went and took some pictures during the week. And we were to meet on Saturday. It was pouring rain that day. And after about three hours driving, we got to the house. But, oh, gee, there's someone else looking at it. And we will have to wait in the car on the street because they were in the driveway. That was okay. Because it gave me the opportunity to watch the water running off the rotten roof onto the broken hanging gutters and onto the rotted out porch. Naturally, the par parade of local losers were already driving past with the usual high beams with one headlight. Needless to say, this guy was history. And I contacted the local professional lady agent who helped me find and make a deal on a wonderful house that is on a channel that goes into the lake. It had a dock with a boat lift and a cement ramp alongside the attached garage with enough room for all of my vehicles. There's a lot going on under normal circumstances when buying a house. But when you're targeted, things can get very frustrating. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I'll talk about my moving day on a later video. While in escrow, who knows who had access to the house? And when I was able to start moving things, that's when the gas lighting started. I found things in the house that I didn't bring there, but had been on the boat, even thrown away in the garbage long ago that would turn up in the house. This area is known for not many jobs being, a, 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 not for not many jobs being a lake and resort area. Many of the houses are for vacation use and still empty most of the year. Needless to say that there's no lack of unemployed people that would jump at the chance to try and ruin another's life for money or some kind of personal gain. Fast forward, I moved in and there's a knock on the door. Hi, we're here with the Property Owners Association and we need to talk about you and the trees that we notified you about that need to be removed. Huh? I mean, he just moved in. Now we're on to part six. What notice? <laughs> we sent out a notice to the owner about the trees in the back on the bank. I never got a notice. What's the name? Well, that's not the previous owner's name, and it's not me. 
I had Anthony's Trees Service inspect the trees before close of escrow, and he said they were okay. The POA never could find a copy of the letter, and it cost me $4,000 to have the trees cut down to 16-foot stumps. The program that they run on me is the Red Squad. Red cars, red trucks, red windbreakers, toddlers and strollers are dressed in red teenage kids with red backpacks on red bikes. Red, red, red everywhere I go. Since I don't have to go anywhere, the parade past the house is nonstop. If it's not red, then it's timed that two vehicles will cross each other from both directions in front of the house. Yep, that happens to me too. Christmas lights everywhere I go. A few of the houses near me have Christmas lights on every night. And when I take the garbage cans to the street, they flash frantically. I've been here for four years and don't know one person. However, I do have pictures of every one of them with a red <laughs> windbreaker on. When someone has a roofer, a gardener, or a tree trimmer, or whatever it is that fall that fails, that they are going to be wearing red. It never fails that they're going to be wearing red. And then there's all the unusual noises used to irritate. I won't list them all here. After about a year, I made a sign that looks like a neighborhood watch, but says, gang stalker watch and put that out front. I also use a six by eight tarp and painted on it, organized community harassment going on here and the zip code. It was on the front gate for a while before the POA sent a notice that signs are not allowed. If not removed, I would be fined. And after a while, I still got a fine of $75 in the mail. I forget how it happened, but some board members agreed to meet with me at my house. I recorded the event, and in a nutshell, it explained why the sign was there. They said it's my imagination. I said, okay, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But some board members agreed to meet with me at my house. I recorded the event. Oops, I, I'm reading this again. I'm sorry. I said, okay, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But does it make any sense that at my age, with no previous history of anything odd, no criminal record, buying a dream home to retire would resort to do something as drastic as putting up a 6 by 8 sign like that if it wasn't happening? I took the sign down and they left. The next day, I got, my, got in my truck to go to the post office, and before I went, 50 feet there was a red truck followed me there. I got back home to put the sign back up. These ass associations, ASS, the ass associations, can put a lien on your home. So in a couple of years, the sign, long worn away, but it ends up costing about $600 in back fees and penalties. Speaking of post offices, only about a mile away on flat paved road, but they don't deliver mail to the house. You have to have a post office box. But they won't link the box with the house address. So anything sent to the house address without the post office box number was returned to sender unable to deliver. Think about that. It included 11 vehicle res re registrations, insurance bills, bank statements, tax documents. Everything was lost and had to be straightened out. The post office still won't link the house and box. But I guarantee that when I pull into the lot, it'll be full of red cars. And the line inside will be getting longer. And the outside lights will be on. The nearby stores with lights in the windows, they will be flashing. Of course, a fire truck or ambulance, coincidentally, will have a call and go past with lights flashing on their way to, respond, the, to, the, to first respond. Probably at the Chinese Buffet. Part 7 coming tomorrow. Let's see. We got Part 7 here. So, 
After about six years of overt gang stalking, the way it stands now, nothing has changed except me. The amount of perpetrators involved in this criminal activity is staggering. The majority of traffic on the road, the few times I go anywhere, is because of me. I realize that sounds conceited, but I'm just documenting what's been happening to me. Years ago, I tried telling someone what was happening, and he said, who are you? Why all those people doing this just to you? Well, that's the million dollar question because I'm nobody. I never posted anything anywhere. I'm not a whistleblower of government secrets. I don't care about social media. And the few acquaintances that I shared any video with, well, they don't believe me or care. And then I will try to rationalize that what they see with excuses like this, with this camera or reflection or wood fibers, etc. I'm guessing that's because their mind can't deal with what their eyes see. They don't believe me anyway, but that doesn't mean it's not happening or true. After a half an hour of telling the same friend what I'm going through, his response was, quote, You know you paint a lot of stuff and smell the fumes. And you hit your head in the past, unquote. Oh my goodness, I can't believe he said that. I never said anything again. What would be my motive to come up with such outrageous information? The reward for sounding the alarm and try to awake the sleepers is a ridicule, contempt, and alienation. More and more individuals are speaking up about their same abuses. The confusion when the program becomes overt is the worst part, and the evil, sick program would probably succeed if the target never knew what was happening to many others. Thinking it's only yourself is a lot to deal with. The human mind is much more fragile than we think. It doesn't take exotic equipment that it can be as simple as a toot from a car horn or a porch light. But when it's used as a weapon, like every time you walk out the door or day or night, over and over you get sensitized. There's another part of this free range prison that we find ourselves in. That's the spiritual aspect and the supernatural. I want to back up now to when the gang stalking had started and I was living on the boat in the marina. And I can't believe all these vehicles are reacting to me. So I decide I need to figure out the boundaries and limitations. My plan was to get up at 3 a.m., jump in a Corvette that I had and was basically disposable and a daily driver to see how many of these effers <laughs> are out there and if I can lose them. Well, I tried and I did my best driving fast and randomly with no plan even up a narrow switchback mountain road with no success. It didn't matter. They seemed to know where I was going when I myself didn't even know. The brighting of one headlight was always there. That has never changed, and I have adjusted and have gotten used to it. Of course, I can't plan to be somewhere like I used to do because there's an ever-possible way to hinder my travel but they will be there doing 40 and a 55. Lucky for me, I'm patient. There's also the staged accident scenes. The police and fire department don't have a problem with holding up 100 cars for a little while just to inconvenience and inflict some, tra some trauma on a target. Of course, the tow truck companies and the city workers, PG and E road crews, and many more are all criminally involved in this also. Okay, so I'm back on the boat and I find out what targeting is, gang stalking is, etc. I hear the stories, so I think I better secure things. I order a motion detector camera with infrared night vision. Well, guess what? That opens up a whole new can of worms on top of what's going on because the infrared is showing all kinds of orbs. I'm also capturing spirits, kind of like your stock ghost. And when I sweep it around in the engine room, 
I video two entities with surprised looks on their faces. I also start filming demons and stuff I call gray matter, even on my cell phone. I'm ending part seven here. I remember a saying, there are no atheists in a foxhole. I believed in God and that Jesus has walked on the earth. And now I need to humbly ask Father God in Jesus' name for some help. I'm going to tell you uh, that I believe that some of those orbs that are showing up on your infrared, because I have seen them also, I believe that some of these are very cloaked small people. Cloaked, they're using in, 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 invisibility devices, cloaking devices, but they only show up on infrared. So let me see here. So I've got a part eight here. My mom used to drag me to church on most Saturdays, and I went on sun to Sunday school until I was old enough to resist. I was around 10 years old when I had to memorize Psalm 23 and stand in front of, uh, front of the class and recite it. <clears throat> Little did I know that then, remembering that prayer was going to be the most powerful defense that I had. When 55 years later into the future, I wanted to do this walk down a street without a bunch of zombies in cars driving by me like sharks that smell fresh blood on porch lights going on in the daytime as I walk past the houses. For those unfamiliar with Psalm 23, it's about walking through the valley of the shadow of death and not fearing evil. So many things that seemed abstract in the Bible at the time all took on new meaning Enemies? What enemies? Oh, these enemies. Now it made more sense. I knew that the world was changing, and I found that it was playing out as predicted in the book that was written 2,000 years prior. The veil being lifted near the end times. Yep, you got it. That night, I'm seeing all that stuff, and it's stalking me. This is much more than just people get a McDonald gift cards. That seems like Satan himself has a problem with me. Some will be able to see things and realize real ties with real eyes, others not so much. Those that are unaware of, a, of the, the spirit realm around us will gnash their teeth and fall over with a heart attack from shock when this stuff hits the fan. I'm sure there are still different kinds of targeting situations and people being used for experimentation and this and that, but all of it's pure evil and cruel to do to someone. Who would even think of such a thing? Well, personally, I seem to find all the answers in the book. The angel, angels that fell from God's grace have been given free reign over the earth. They have been cross-breeding with humans and have an agenda to destroy everything good and holy. Are targeted people the 144,000 that remain at the end? Or are we the remaining bloodlines from the 12 tribes of Judea? Are we the special ones that God cares about enough to shake us wide awake like silver being refined in the fire? While the rest stay asleep and are doomed? Or is it none of the above? I don't know. But when I was 18, I knew everything. And now at 70, I know almost nothing. Everything we were told about history, about myth mythical beings, about space, and about our reality have been lies with evil intent by the father of lies that runs this place and the harvest time is coming the wheat is going into the barn and the weeds will tear into the fire stand up to evil with your god-given authority and don't play their game watch their childish show that they put on and laugh it off they want your soul and it's all a mind game put your full faith in god and the righteousness and all the fear will disappear I don't film or search out the beings that surround us. The Bible says not to. I found it all by accident, and I have seen enough to know what's there. 
I think my mission is just to share the message with whomever wants to hear it. I just went into one of the bedrooms that face the street to check on the new kitten. I opened up the blinds and a kid with a red backpack is walking past. Then a red pickup truck goes by and a red car comes from the other direction and a third red vehicle from a direction of the truck. So predictable, six years now. One definition of insanity is doing the same thing without changing anything over and over, but expecting a different result. Yes. Isn't that uh, Albert Einstein said that? Let me see. Is there a part nine? Part nine. Okay, I've got a part nine. We are living in a time period that is full of dimensional entities that our indoctrination made us believe it didn't exist. How many church services contain information about how to deal with any attacks by supernatural beings? They want to preach to the congregation about what makes them feel good and ignore the true written word. As a result, we stand as sheep among wolves. At least in Islam, they acknowledge the Dijan, D, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this, I'm spelling D-G-I-N-N, Jin, were created of smokeless fire. Besides being different types, they have individual personalities like we do. They can shapeshift into anything, but in a natural state, look like a shadow when in this realm. This is a type of Jin that continuously fly, and the accounts of some things in the air that I filmed in UFOs, when I go outside, a car horn will honk in the distance or in any one of the many triggers that they use to let you know that they're always watching. Police sirens have become a common occurrence also. If they don't get a reaction from the cars going by, it doesn't take long before the planes will start up. But sometimes just the jet noise over and over the course. When I look at the radar that's available online, there's nothing even close by. Everything that is used as a weapon always has a probable deniability, unless it's being done to you, yourself. I understand why people don't believe it, and the targeted one sounds insane. My opinion is that artificial intelligence are the demons and minions of lost souls that need a vessel to occupy, be it human or clone or robot, to manifest in this dimension. Oh, I wonder if that's what CERN was doing. The rest of the time, they influence our world in many ways. The electrical grid is important to them. And I'm not the only one that has seen them in street lights that are in remote areas. I have witnesses that have seen a city street light on a summer afternoon. Come on. When I was sitting in a car. Even a nighttime navigational marker on the lake when I got near it on a sunny day. These energy light beings like to mess with me. When I was in the process of moving, I arrived at the marine around 3 a.m. I drove out into the point of land that has a view of the river. And there, as far as I could see, along the opposite bank, there were intense individual twinkling lights. None of that was normal. It was meant to freak me out. And at that time, I did. I read comments of people that want to see a UFO. Well, be careful what you wish for. All I have to do is look up any time, and if you film them, they won't go away. If I was put on a list by a vindictive individual, I have a good idea of who that could be. He comes across like one of the most likable and friendly kind of persons you would ever meet at first. He's either the son of or the nephew of a well-known politician. The family doesn't really know for sure which brother is the father. I know there were at least three lawsuits filed against him because of bogus business deals that he blatantly scammed money over unsuspecting victims. 
Then he goes around like he doesn't that it doesn't matter while looking for another. He sounds like a narcissist. There's a long list of creepy stuff. But the kicker is when I videotaped him and stopped the playback. Not only had his face morphed into some evil looking thing, but his hands were to have turned into claws. And there are two of these gray matter things on him that I mentioned before. I show this to a few people who know him and about him, and they got scared and experienced a rude awakening to something supernatural that can't be unseen. I don't know, but that's another possibility. I think I should do a part 10 and talk about the orbs. So uh, that's it. I've got up to part 9. If for some reason there was a part 10, um, I don't have it. Okay, so... I don't remember if you wanted me to use your name, so I'm just going to label you TK, okay? If you want me to mention your name, I will add it into the subject heading. But this is, I am sharing a testimony story of TK. Um, please remember to hit the thumbs up, like, comment, share if you feel inclined to do so. It helps the channel go grow and get these testimonies out there. Other people need to hear these testimonies so they don't feel alone. This is happening to so many people. And we need to band together, share these testimonies, and expose what is happening. Anyway, this is Lorraine Alternative Homesteading. Thank you so much for sharing your testimony with me. If there is a part 10 or 11 or 12, we can always do a part 2. We're at 41, almost 42 minutes here. This is Lorraine Alternative Homesteading signing off for now.